Welcome, Mitchell. Great. Thank you very much. So, uh, hello, everyone. My name is Shannon McMahon. I am the, uh, the first female candidate for district attorney in Bristol County. Um, give you a little bit about myself, um, try to keep it brief. So I'm a mother of four, uh, married, uh, grew up in Swansea, Massachusetts. So I know a little bit further away from Mansfield than you guys are. Uh, but I went to Roger Williams University for my undergrad. I went to UMass Law. Uh, I was a paralegal for about uh, ooh, seven, eight years. Uh, throughout my undergraduate career, as well as my, uh, you know, when I was pregnant with my kids. Then I was fortunate enough to go to law school at UMass Law while I had a two-month-old and a two-year-old. I was editor-in-chief of Law Review. I graduated top of my class. I was also fortunate enough to teach at UMass to help pay for law school because that's not cheap. Um, I was also the uh, Superior Court clerk, judicial clerk. Uh, for Judge Kane, uh, and after graduation, I was hired uh, full time by the trial court in Boston to be the judicial clerk for all of the Superior Court justices in Bristol County. I uh, did that for a number of years. Then I opened up my own private practice as a criminal defense attorney, and then I was hired by Sam Sutter to be an assistant district attorney. I was the prosecutor in charge of recovery court. Uh, back then, it was called drug court. Uh, we were the very first certified drug court, uh, which I was very proud of. It, uh, it's not an easy gig, um, but I was very proud of that. And I saw real numbers, real, real numbers. And uh, now I do uh, civil litigation out of Boston. Uh, my office is in Raynham. Um, in terms of why I'm running, I was kind of tired of watching the same old, same old. I have a 17 year old, a 15 year old, a 14 year old and a nine year old uh, that all live in Bristol County. Uh, actually my two youngest live uh, just outside of it, but um, I'm living this life and I'm tired of people telling me that we're safe and that they're doing a great job because my kids aren't and no one kids are. Everyone is struggling. Um, the drug crisis is out of control. And it takes an election. It takes someone to have the gumption to say, you're wrong. We're not safe. Uh, there's shootings every night. There is stabbings every night. There's something going on. There's, you know, there's fentanyl now in everything. It's even in marijuana. And I, I think the first step in fixing a problem is identifying that there is one. And I would like to identify that there's a problem. We absolutely have one. Um, and we can do something about it. You know, the numbers are very clear. You know, when I was in recovery court, uh, we, the numbers basically are roughly 70% that these people will not commit another crime if they successfully graduate from recovery court for at least 14 years. Bristol County has the highest rate of recidivism in Massachusetts. It's extraordinarily high. We can do something about that. We can do something that with the homeless veterans in New Bedford, we can get a veterans court, which we can utilize the resources that are out there and help these people. These are the most common crimes. Now, I'm at the Democratic Committee, so I will also say I am the only true Democrat. My opponent is, uh, he's a lot of things, uh, but he is anti-choice does not support a woman's right to choose. He does not believe in rehabilitation, even though the science supports it. Um, but the big thing is the, the woman's right to choose. There was a national petition put out there 
by, uh, I forget which one, but it was thrown out to all district attorneys throughout the country, vowing to not extradite or prosecute anyone who chose to get an abortion or sought aid to get an abortion or anybody who provided an abortion. Maura Healy signed it, seven district attorneys in Massachusetts signed it. Every, uh, so many people signed it. Kentucky signed it, uh, red and blue across the aisle signed it. Tom Quinn refused to sign it, does not support that. And he's gonna keep saying that he, it's not a big deal because Massachusetts codified it. Well, those things can change. Once a constitutional, law has been changed, they're fluid. Everybody needs to ask, where do my elected officials stand? And I firmly believe that I am the true democratic candidate. I believe that what I'm trying to do not only works, but then it allows us to free up the courts so we can actually go after the dealers and the bad people who are out there. Right now, the current administration treats users and dealers the exact same way. It doesn't work. You can't do it in a, in a place like Bristol County. Bristol County is huge. Trust me. That's why I can't be there in person with you right now because I live in Swansea and I've got teenagers here and I couldn't get there tonight. Um, it's a huge place. We have to be smart about the way we deal with this. The number one way to do this is, I'm not reinventing the wheel. It's just like everyone else. You treat the users like users. You treat the dealers like dealers. When you treat them both the same, you've got a court backlog, the likes of which my opponent just said was the biggest problem that he's facing. There's a way to fix that. Stop treating users like dealers. Anybody trafficking in fentanyl, methamphetamine, or heroin into Bristol County should be prosecuted to the fullest degree. But let's get the user's help. Let's take away the need. We can do all of these things. And if we hire a grant writer, which I know sounds so simple, but they have yet to do this. Hire a grant writer. There is so much money out there that is being left alone. And Bristol County receives nothing. We get none of it because they never even apply for it. The first application that my opponent applied for was through the rape kit test, which he just did in 2018. And then never followed up on it. If you had a grant writer, we would have known about this. That grant was available in 2015. So 1,100 rate kits were left untested because we didn't have a body in there. But I will tell you that the top five people in that office all get paid over $100,000 a year and none of them live in Bristol County. Why can't we use that for a grant writer position? So the Benefits from federal grants can go to Bristol County people. Like I said, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. Uh, and, and certainly I've never ever once been accused of attacking my opponent in a personal fashion. I'm going to attack his politics. He has taken a very low road and attacked my family because he has nothing to say about what I'm saying. I'm trying to look forward to the future. Like I said, I've got children here. I live here. I'm worried. I don't feel more safe than I did eight years ago, 16 years ago. I feel less safe. Post COVID, we've really got to start worrying about our juveniles to a maximum degree. There are no beds to be had for our kids who are potentially committing suicide and there are far too many of them. We really need to admit there's a problem. And I'm happy to take some questions. Are there any questions? Seeing none, anybody on the Zoom? 
Well, we're we'll checking right now, Shannon. Hold on. Nope, there seems to be no questions at this time, Shannon. Oh, we do. Yeah. Okay. So my question, she uh, uh, mentioned that uh, uh, there were all these rape kits that have not been examined. I thought I saw in the newspaper that they are dealing with that back row of, of, uh, of rape kits that have not been processed. And the district attorney's office in Bristol County has already started doing that. Um, catching up with it. Um, so, what's you know, you mentioned it, so I'm just pointing that out. So, is that still an issue? So, so yeah, so, uh, realistically, like I said, you know, the, the rape kits were there, uh, they were untested for years. Um, my opponent has been in this office for 16 years. I'm sorry, I'm a woman. I'm a mother of, of, women, of young women. Any, any rape test that were left there that long is, is unconscionable. However, that being said, I will give it to my opponent that he did apply for the grant, but he didn't do it until 2018. It's been available since 2015. This is a problem that could have been solved if he didn't have so many people on the top getting paid so much and you had a grant writer looking up this stuff. You know, these are things that could have been resolved sooner. And any victim of rape deserves that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and, and thank you for your question. Is that question on the phone? Yep, I'm Sally Faravari. I have a question. Uh, if somebody else can go first. Uh, I think you're the only one. Go ahead, uh, Sally. Okay, thank you so much, Kevin. Well, thank you so much for coming to speak to us tonight. Um, you know, a Bristol County Sheriff Hodgson doesn't believe in treatment for drug problems and so on and so forth. So it, it's been a really tough row to hope in Bristol County. Um, can you speak to that a little bit and what you see as working with perhaps a new sheriff and how you can really affect change? Sure, so, you know, I don't believe the current sheriff is the only one who believes that. I believe if you look at the debate that me and my opponent had, I believe at the end, he actually said she just wants to let them all out of jail. Um, and that's not at all my point. I think treatment works and I'm not alone. I think most people do. Um, when it comes to the sheriff, I, I would say that, uh, you know, uh, I've, I've met Tom probably 10, 15 times. Um, he's a very social man. Uh, his wife is quite lovely. Uh, I enjoyed my conversation. I was quite frank with him and told him I disagree with 100% of what he stands for. Um, my opponent doesn't do that. He tries to play both sides of the Democratic and the Republican aisle. Um, but I, of course, I'll have to work with him if he gets elected. It just means it's more work. Um, and so we've got to be, pre be prepared for that. I mean, that's a reality. Uh, the man's been in office for a couple of decades um, and that's something you've got to be prepared for. It just means that the DA's office should take more and expand the recovery court and expand the veterans court, which we would have if I win, um, but do a mental health court, which is, these are things I want to do the Veterans Court, the Mental Health Court, and expanding the Recovery Court, we'll have to take more of that. Um, if the local House of Corrections is not going to have any sort of treatment there, because it's the only thing that works. It really is. And again, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? No, 
Okay, Shannon, I think that's it. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. We wish thank you the you best guys. of luck. I appreciate and, uh, it. We'll hear from you soon, I'm sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we, I have our second guest speaker is on also Dax Crocker on behalf of the years on one fair share amendment committee. I believe he's on. Yes, I'm here. Hey, you are. Hey, good, good evening. Welcome to Mansfield. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Um, may I proceed? You're on. All right. Very good. Uh, thank you um, to everyone here. Uh, thank you for facilitating a hybrid um, session. I know it's uh, challenging, but you're doing a great job. Uh, and those of us who can make it in person appreciate this opportunity of being here on the Zoom um, side of the, of the session. Uh, everyone, uh, my name is Dax Crocker. I am a public school teacher in uh, Fall River, Massachusetts. I also work for the Fair Share Amendment Campaign who is trying to put money into public schools in uh, public transportation. And that's why I, I got involved. Um, here in the South Coast, as it is the case in uh, many areas of uh, the Commonwealth, uh, public education has been underfunded for a long time. Just today, uh, a few minutes ago, before this session started, I was watching the news and I heard that Tomorrow, President Biden is going to announce a $10,000 cancellation of his student loan debt on people who have taken uh, loans from the federal government for higher education. Uh, we, wait, we will wait to see what happens tomorrow, uh, if that is true or, or the amount is lower or higher. But it, it's just to speak to the reality that many of us are facing in order for us to get some education at the college level, we have to get into huge debt just to get an education. And that is not what happened a generation ago. People who are still alive today would remember when they went to school and the tuition was $700 a semester, uh, they would come out from uh, a four year college education degree with no debt or very minimum debt. Mm -hmm. And that is not because at that time, uh, education was less expensive than it is today. If you compare dollar to dollar, uh, you'll see that it, it wasn't uh, less expensive. What the difference was is that the government would uh, pay for about 80% of the tuition or more, and the student would pay something around 10, 15% of the tuition. That has gone completely opposite in one generation where the student now is responsible for 80 or more percent of their uh, tuition, and the government is helping them with, you know, 10%. 15% of the cost of going to college. And so the next generation, the generation that is graduating and has been graduating in the last few years has mortgaged their future. And we are trying to correct that with the fair share amendment. The same is true for public transportation. I have friends in New Bedford, Massachusetts who work in the New Bedford Industrial Park, which is you know, 10, 15 minutes away from their house. The last time I was with one of them, I had to give him a ride to his job because there is no public buses that will take people to their job site in, within 10 minutes, 15 minutes within the same city. That is unacceptable in 2022 in the United States, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Why is that happening? because public transportation is underfunded. The money goes somewhere else, but not where it's supposed to go. Also, I have a friend in Fall River, Massachusetts, who had to pass on an acceptance at Bridgewater University because she didn't have a car at that time and public transportation was unreliable for her to be able to go to school from Fall River to Bridgewater and back. 
to her house. That has to change. The Fair Share Amendment will ensure that these two social illnesses are addressed. Between two to four billion dollars in new revenue will come and will be constitutionally committed to public education and public transportation. The Fair Share Amendment is not a law, it's not a bill, it's not a proposition by voters. It is a constitutional amendment that says that we would like people earning over a million dollars in personal net income, net income after all their deductions, after writing off all their expenses, whatever is left over a million dollars, we want four pennies out of every dollar, just four pennies. That's all we're asking. And, though, and that amount is going to raise two to four billion dollars that will be constitutionally committed to public education, anything from elementary to college in master's degrees, doctor degrees that people take, people earn through uh, public institutions. Public transportation will be addressed with this revenue. So I am asking the Mansfield Democratic Town Committee here for their endorsement. This is going to benefit your folks. It is going to benefit 7 million plus residents of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The money is in about 20,000 people who live in this state who will be the ones uh, paying for this contribution that our Commonwealth badly needs. So please consider endorsing, please consider volunteering, please consider joining us in knocking on doors this uh, end of the summer and the fall before the elections in November. Please consider phone banking with us if you can. I'm here as someone who teaches in public school in a high needs uh, middle school in Fall River, Massachusetts. And I can tell you, we are overwhelmed. We need more teachers, we need more um, assistance. I teach to a, a caseload of over 250 students because we don't have the money to hire more teachers. So I, I have to teach to 250 students. That is, <laughs> you know, we do what we can. Please help us by endorsing us. And I am here to answer any questions that you may have as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, does anybody have any questions that they'd like to ask? Or? Thank you so much for your passion and, and for your work on this. It's not just the inner city uh, kids who can't, you know, who need better education and so on. We also need to think of the rural uh, communities that don't have the money for the science labs and so on. So, um, and the mass transportation. We used to have dedicated trolleys and so on and so forth here. And now our streets are being clogged with cars. Um, and yeah, so I think I fully support this and thank you so much. Bye now. Thank you, Sally. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Mr. Boyd, may I ask a question? I suppose you could. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was just wondering uh, if you could leave maybe in the chat uh, some direction where you need help with phone calls and so forth uh, after the primaries. I would love to help. Uh, both of my parents were public school teachers and I uh, cannot say enough about your entire profession. I, I took the easy way out and went to law school. Uh, so I give you the, uh, the highest honor I can. And after the primary, I'm all yours and I'm happy to work on this uh, with you. Thank you. If you could just put it up in the chat so I can take it down how to contact you. I will, I will post a link where people can sign up for various volunteering 
um, opportunities. Thank you. Jax, we're going to send out your uh, information out to everybody on our committee. Please. And they'll contact you and you can advise them to what you need or whatever they want to volunteer to help. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Seeing none. Jax, thank you for your time, sir. Good luck. Well, I'm sure we'll be seeing more of you. Have a good night. Thank you. Sure. Good night.